hiking 90 miles along the coast of Sardinia. I've been wanting an adventure in a tropical paradise. I thought I'd have to travel across the world to find it, but I actually don't. I'll be heading to Sardinia, often called the Caribbean of Europe. With its rugged coastline, a tropical climate and pristine emerald waters, it's ideal for a solo backpacking adventure. I'll be walking over 20 miles a day, sticking to the coast. Oh, I'm Liam by the way. I'll be starting in the northeast in a city called Olbia before making my way south to the Gulf of Orizé. I'll be carrying my life in my pack, camping on beaches and swimming in the sea. I'll be transient, having a low impact on the environment around me, always moving. There's so much to experience in the world and I feel I'm only just getting started. So grab some popcorn, put your feet up and enjoy the journey. I got a short flight from Manchester to Olbia. It didn't take long. I hit the road and headed towards the coast. Planes were going overhead and I could smell the fresh sea air. The blue sky and the turquoise water were exactly why I was here. I'd have to make a short crossing across the sea so my trainers came off. The water was so warm. Oh, this is sketchy. Might get wet feet. <laughs> I managed to keep them dry. Sardinia was perfect. I realise why they call it the Caribbean of Europe now. Oh yeah. Lots of little geckos and lizards running around. So you've got a few holiday resorts. And then I'll be heading up there and along. Let's go. So the beach and the coastal path have run out. And these are the type of roads I'll be taking. Just dirt roads. It's like a desert. The sun is shining overhead. Whenever I see cacti, I know to stock up on water. I'd follow the sandy tracks, and whenever they ran out, I'd get in the miles on the main roads. I tried my first Sardinian beer, ideal hydration with a sea view in the shade. Just off the coast I could see an island in the distance. The trail wasn't defined at all, but I didn't mind. It was great to hug the seaside and create my own paths. So there's about an hour left of sunlight. I've been walking for a good few hours now. I've enjoyed it. This is like everything I imagined it to be. Just nice little beaches. And the further I get away from Olbia, the quieter it's getting. It's like the golden hour, then just one hour before sunset. Everything turns to gold. <laughs> It is like the perfect sunlight. Whew. So it's cooled right down and it's like, I couldn't wish for a better start. <laughs> so there's a, there's a few buildings over there. Once to get past them, I'm gonna walk for about another half an hour and then I'll find a nice secluded beach or some like hills and I'll set up camp. I just stumbled upon some nice boats. Look at these. Slightly inland were some expensive looking neighborhoods. As I was walking through town, a groundsman of a football stadium was growing a new pitch. The sun was getting lower in the sky, minute by minute. I got to a beach and the colours were out of this world. I was just across from the island I'd spotted earlier. I think I found a camping spot. 
Just making my way over to a little beach over there. Look at these colors. I've timed this perfect. So the sun's gone down that way below the horizon. So in the morning it should rise this way, hopefully. I'm just outside the tent, just looking at all these colors. I can't wrap my head around it. The sun went down like an hour ago. And it's just still so light. It's October. Wow. I'll show you my setup. Nice flat ground there. You can feel the moisture in the air because you're right next to the coast. So that tent is going to have lots of condensation on it in the morning. I can guarantee it. Other than that, temperature's nice. Peaceful, colorful. What more can you want? What a first day. I couldn't help but watch the sunset and admire the colors in the sky. It really did look like a painting. It was time to hit the hay, so I turned in for the night. The sun was my alarm clock. It gently illuminated the whole tent. It's by far my favorite way to wake up. It wasn't a bad view to brush my teeth to. I said my last goodbyes to camp. Nothing beats this. Waking up on a beach that I've got to myself. Sun on your skin. It's not too hot, so it's perfect. Ah, what a start to the day. So, I slept really well. I woke up about 7 a.m packed away quickly the condensation was crazy you can just feel it in the air because of the moisture and you're next to the coast so it was always going to happen but i'm absolutely fine with it waking up to that view that sunrise the morning brought some roll walking before joining the coast again okay so there's water there and there's a few rocks but there's a wall I can try skirt around. Oh, they're probably thinking, what is he doing? <laughs> oh yeah, simple. I think this is the actual route. So hopefully I'll be able to get around the other side. Oh yeah. managed to capture a flock of birds sunbathing, each on their own rock. Trying to walk at a good speed on sand dunes is almost impossible. It's the hardest thing to walk on by a mile. Progress was slow, but eventually you get your rewards. I've been following this trail that's not even on the map. So it's kind of <laughs> a complete surprise to me and wow. Sometimes you have the most fun when it's not scripted and planned out. I'd come across lots of animals like cautious cats.
grazing cattle. And really happy dogs. I mean, really, really happy. Hello. And on occasion, creepy robot lawnmowers like this. The towns were really vibrant, with lots of flowers growing. I found the cafe and I got a coffee and a nice cold coke. The sun was high in the sky this time of day. Just following this main road and over there flamingos that is so crazy vineyards and wildflowers line the sides of busy roads the color of the sea still draws me in it's like a magpie with shiny objects. I just can't help myself. I've just came through this, it looks like a building site, or it was. There's a port just over there with no ships in. <laughs> you just got people fishing everywhere, sunbathing. And there are so many signs up saying don't enter, <laughs> but people just ignore it, so. I came in and, yep. It was much quicker than heading back inland. Every bend I took on the coast led to a different beach or cove. Just been following the coast this way and I came up and I spotted this place. It's got a nice little cove that I can go for a swim, which I'll do in a minute because it's hot. Very hot. Behind me is a little forest. That's where I'm going to camp. There's a little flat spot I've cleared out. Uh, drying my stuff out. Just before the sun goes down below the horizon. It's about 5.30 pm. Got about an hour, an hour and a half sunlight. There's a paddleboard over there. The boat. This place is great. It's actually a nice feeling knowing how far you've come. So if I'm not mistaken, I think that was the island I camped opposite, right down there, down the coast. And it looks a lot shorter than I've actually done because it's just zigzagging along the coast. It, the miles stack up. So yeah, nice knowing how far you've come. You can visually see it. It's brilliant. In the morning, I go that way. I've, I think there's a town not too far away that way. So this is probably the perfect spot to stop. Let's go for a dip. The seagull was probably wondering what I was doing. Shots are just drying over there, getting the last of the sun. And you can just see the colour coming in already. The tent just set it up. So it's, uh, it's actually tucked in, flat ground. I love it. Let me go retrieve these and then I'm gonna get some food on. Tell you what, there are worse places to eat a meal. The colours. So that's the past two nights now. Just these. Purpley pinks. Amazing. And this food is amazing. Just the usual couscous, sausage, olive oil. It's lightweight, high calorie. Does the job. Oh, today has been. 11 out of 10.
The sun had baked the ground. It was hard underfoot, similar to the road. Ideal for some big miles. This part of the path is so overgrown. Let's just hope there's no spiders on me. <laughs> I was actually on a trail that had been used since Roman times, probably even before then. The forest smell mixed with the fresh sea air was, it was indescribable. Wow. I was low on water and the town was nearby. When I get into civilization, I'm so grateful for the little things. A comfy chair with a morning coffee. It's my idea of a contrasting paradise. Just taking a rest in the shade, it's hot. It's about 29 degrees. With it being near the coast as well, you'd think there'd, there'd be some wind, but there isn't. I'm enjoying it though. It's such a change from the UK. It's good. So, managed to fill my water up. The only problem is, in Sardinia, the tap water, you can't drink it. So, luckily, I got my water filter. I debated on whether bringing this or not. I didn't think I'd need it, but I suppose it's justified it. And I'm glad I brought it. So. It's important to stay hydrated. I'm probably drinking about four and a half, five liters of water a day. I try to buy at least two of the two liter water bottles whenever possible. Shade is a lifesaver. I found an old place where they used to tie up ships and boats. Over the years, it's actually underwater now. If you didn't know any better, you might think I was in the African bush with the trees like that and the shrub and the, you know, the sand. So similar, but I'm not. I'm just outside a Sardinian village, hugging the coastline. It's probably as hot as the African bush. The further I headed south down the coast, the better the beaches were getting. I sat there just thinking about life without a care in the world. I've just come across all of these kittens. <laughs> So small. Chilling in the shade. What a life. This is by far the coolest boat I'd ever seen, without a doubt. A cycle path hugged close to the coast for a few miles, so I followed it. Come to the conclusion, I'm gonna to have to get my feet wet. So on the map, this is like a full beach, but obviously <laughs> something's happened. So I've been heading this way and heading that way down the coast. So best get my traders and socks off. It's only a little bit. Hopefully it's not too deep. That tide is coming in quick. Let's go. Oh, it's nice. That is deep. That is deep. Oh, my shorts gonna get wet. Oh, I thought it was only short. Okay. 
simple. So we're going to head to that tower in the distance and then just get past the houses and look for a camp. The sun was just going down below the hills. I walked barefoot all along that beach. If I could walk like it all the time, I would. With light fading, I needed a camping spot. Not too far away, I was in luck. Oh, I have found a good spot for tonight. A little pebble beak. I'm just above the sea. Got a forest behind me, nice and green. The sun just going below the, the hills. It's like the African savanna or something, isn't it? What is this? <laughs> I've uh, just followed the coast all the way from there around. These colours are insane. So, yeah, I'm going to sleep well tonight. I need to sit down. My legs, especially my feet, the, the soles of my feet, wow, aching. 23, we're just over. I've done today 23 miles, that is. Kilometres, 28, close to 30 maybe, I don't know. Whew. But uh, after after days like this, I feel so good, so, so good. Although my body is tired, my mind, my soul are energized to the max. After being out in the sun all day with the fresh air, it is so good for your health. It's, uh, we really do underestimate it, don't we? This right now is comfortable. It's been a great day, a great, great day. Some view, some, some view though. I'd often chill in my tent in the morning just before it got too hot. I love being nomadic like this, packing away my gear each morning and not knowing where I was sleeping later that evening. It's a great feeling. I'd pass through forests and take the roads for a little while. Somewhere down the coast was a lighthouse, helping ships stay afloat since 1903. So far this is the wildest part of the walk following it all the way around just inland there's nice green forest hills over that way 29 degrees celsius it's warm every little bit of shade i get it's heaven <laughs> so this goes on now for about nine miles which it's quite a lot for about three hours of walking and by the end of it i'm probably going to be out of water so Let's hope there's a little bar or a cafe somewhere between here and there because it'll be slightly sketchy. Just come across this. I'm not sure what it's for, but some running water there. It's cold. Hopefully it's not salty. I 
I think that'll do. I've got my water filter anyway. That was so lucky. It's in the middle of nowhere, really. With the plants being so vibrant green, I'm guessing there was a natural spring underground. Out in the distance was a huge yacht. Somebody was obviously having some fun. Along some of the beaches were shacks just like this. It's the ideal stop for a weary traveller. These were some of the most pristine beaches I'd ever set my eyes on. People in Sardinia love to balance rocks on top of each other. I don't know why. The sun was a constant companion, like a pirate with a parrot on his shoulder. I passed through some holiday resorts. They were dotted all over the Sardinian coast. So to my right are some abandoned villas all over, so many of them. They just look like they've been half built and left. Wow. If it wasn't for I needed a dip in the sea just to cool off and wash myself, I would have stayed there. They look so good. There's a little fence I could hop. No CCTV. I've just passed the nearest kind of neighborhood, about half a mile away. Wow, that would top it off just to, to stay in one of them, like Roman villas or something. Ah, oh well, I'm going to keep going. It's about 5pm and I've noticed the past couple of days, the temperature drops by about two or three degrees from when it was, you know, at 12, one o'clock, uh, which you can't really feel the difference, but the intensity of the sun, maybe because it's lower, in the sky, you know, you can, it feels like 50% of its intensity is just gone. It's great. If it was midday right now, oh, I'd have to get in the shade. But uh, yeah, it's just so much better on the skin. Just something I've noticed. Them villas are really enticing. You can get up top as well, like to the second floor. Here you go. I'm quite a way away. Oh well, on we go. I was looking for a way down there to the water. All I could see was steep cliffs. I got down eventually though. This rock pool will be perfect. I'm gonna take a dip here. Okay. I was planning on sleeping on these volcanic rocks, but looks like the tide comes in, so probably not a good idea. Got a ocean liner over there. Just me. Not a bad view. Woo. I genuinely feel like a new person after that. Probably do another 20 miles. Only joking. Thank you. Little rock pool. Now to find a spot to camp. Uh, I think I might keep going slightly further. Find a nice spot with a breeze because up here there's a there's a few spots, but it's all in like the the overgrowth. I don't really fancy it. Loving it. This spot is perfect. It's like it was made to be camped on. Actual grass, <laughs> flat, pretty open with a view of the sea. Okay, thank you Sardinia, I'll take this. All right, I'm gonna set up, get something to eat and enjoy the view.
I was woken up by the sound of a boat engine going by. I packed my tent away for the final time. The fatigue had set in by now. Long strides had turned to weary steps. That honestly wouldn't matter though. I was in for a treat. I think I've found the perfect beach. Let me show you. So it stretches on for about a mile down that way. And almost instantly the mountains just pop up and carry on all the way down there. I think this is the last beach before the mountains finish up there. So it's a good place to end it. Sardinia has been amazing. The best coastal walk I've ever done. The water, crystal clear. If you're willing to put the time and effort into to get to secluded beaches and bays, you are in a paradise. I've loved it, every minute of it. But there's one more thing I want to do before I finish. Sardinia, what a place. 